Felicitous greetings, fellow fanatics. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Adam the Fanatic, and today we're taking a look at Redemption 5th Edition, a Christian-themed dueling card game by Cactus Game Design Incorporated. Please note that while this is a trading card game, I will be looking specifically at the Israel's Deliverance starter set and am not using any boosters. Without any further ado, let's dive in! In Redemption, two players will be competing against one another in an attempt to be the first player to rescue five lost souls. Each player will use Biblical Heroes as offensive cards, using them to attempt to reach lost souls and bring them the good news. However, each player will also be playing out evil characters that will attempt to prevent their foe from achieving this goal. To set up, each player should have a 50 card main deck and a 6 card reserve. When you first get the set, the decks will already be separated, but if they should ever get mixed up, you can look in the lower left corner and separate them into decks K and L, with the reserve cards clearly labeled as such. Each player should shuffle their main deck and place their reserve perpendicular nearby. You do not have to shuffle your reserve. Each player now draws 8 cards. Each player then immediately takes any lost soul cards in their hand and puts them into play, immediately drawing the same number of cards that they just played. If any future cards drawn at any time in the game are lost souls, they'll repeat the process, playing them out, then drawing to replace them. Choose a player to go first, and you're ready to begin. Before we go over turn structure, you should know the different types of cards. Firstly, the aforementioned lost soul cards are the goal of the game. Players each have 7 in their deck, which is also the minimum number required for deck building. Some will give benefits when played out, but for the most part, you won't be directly using your own lost soul cards. You can see the rule text for the card in this box, although many Lost Souls are meek, which simply means that they have no special rules text. The most common types of cards you'll see in your deck are characters and enhancements. Good characters are denoted by a cross. These are the forces that conduct battles and attempt to reach Lost Souls, while evil characters, denoted by a dragon, attempt to hinder them. Characters have two numbers, representing strength, their attack value, and toughness, the amount of damage they can survive in battle. We'll get into more detail about this once we get into the battle phase. Similarly, enhancements are used to empower your characters. Most can only be played during battle, but there are exceptions. Good enhancements are denoted by a Bible, and evil enhancements by a skull. Most, but again, not all, enhancements will also have strength and toughness. Although characters and enhancements are the most common, you'll find a few other types of cards in your decks. Lamb and Grim Reaper icons represent good and evil dominant cards, which are special cards that can be played at any time such as appropriate. Finally, each player has a single stronghold and a few artifacts. These provide passive effects that continue as long as they're active. You may have multiple strongholds, but only one active artifact at a time. When you have multiple artifacts in play, you'll stack them so that only the active artifact is showing on top of the others. Each turn consists of five phases. The first of these is the draw phase, where you'll simply take the top three cards of your deck and add them to your hand. Do bear in mind that the first player will not draw on their first turn. Additionally, the first player may not take any cards from their reserve for any reason during their first turn, to offset the first player advantage. After that, you have the upkeep phase. With these starter decks, not much happens during this time, but if playing with boosters, do keep in mind that some cards will specify that they activate during upkeep. Third is the preparation phase. During this time, you may play out character cards, artifacts, or strongholds. There's no limit to how many you can play, but you may have reasons to keep some in your hand rather than just put them all out immediately. There are also certain types of enhancements that may be played now. Cards with the territory symbol may be played outside of battle. If you do this, ignore their strength and toughness values, resolve their effect as you normally would. Additionally, if any of your characters are warriors, denoted by a sword and shield puzzle piece, you may equip them with a weapon, which will have a matching symbol. Unless something acts to specifically remove a weapon, it'll remain equipped on the warrior in question until they're removed from the field of play. And on one final note, if you have multiple artifacts in play, you may switch your active artifact at this time. Once you're done with your preparation phase, you'll move on to the battle phase. During the battle phase, the active player chooses a good character and may attempt to rescue a lost soul. If there are no lost souls in their opponent's play area, they may simply offer a battle challenge to try and clear out some of their opponent's evil characters. In either case, the opposing player may choose a single evil character from their play area or their hand to defend. When a character is moved onto the field of battle, the special effect on that character is activated and resolved. If an evil character is used, either to block a rescue attempt or in response to a battle challenge, then a battle begins. You'll immediately compare the strength of each side to the toughness of the opposing side. 
If one player's total strength is higher than their opponent's total toughness, then all characters their opponent has in battle will be destroyed at the end of battle if nothing changes. This can result in both sides having their characters destroyed, or both sides having their characters survive. However, this is the point where most enhancements will be played. To play an enhancement, you must have a character with a matching brigade in battle. So for example, if you wanted to play Swept into the Sea, you would need to have at least one White Brigade good character, such as Miriam or Joshua. The option to play cards goes to the player that is currently losing the battle. That is, if your characters would be destroyed and your opponents would survive, then you have the next chance to play an enhancement. If the battle is currently in a stalemate or mutual destruction, then priority goes to the player that did not play a card last. Enhancements can do a great many things. They can band characters together, allowing you to have more than one on the battlefield at a time. They can negate cards, canceling out their rule text. They can underdeck or top deck cards, putting them into their player's deck. I certainly can't go into everything here, but there's a lot of different options that card abilities will grant you. But eventually, you'll reach a point where neither player is willing and able to play more cards. At this time, you'll total up the strength and toughness of each side. Again, if one side's strength is equal to or higher than the opposing side's toughness, then the opposing side is destroyed. If the battle was a rescue attempt and the evil characters were destroyed, then the active player rescues a lost soul from their opponent's land of bondage, even if the good characters are destroyed in the process. When you rescue a lost soul, place it into the land of redemption where it counts towards your victory. To play out an example here, Moses is declared as a hero in a rescue attempt. When he is placed into battle, his ability activates and his player chooses to negate an evil character. In this case, they go with Pharaoh's army because they fear its banding effect. They then draw one additional card into their hand as per Moses' effect. The opposing player responds by putting Egyptian horsemen into battle, which lets them draw two cards. Moses has 1210, while the Egyptian horsemen only have 76. So as things stand, the Egyptians will be destroyed, giving them the initiative. To this point in purpose, they play Moses kills Egyptian, which does not allow Moses to destroy an Egyptian card, but does allow them to bounce a hero, returning Moses to the player's hand. To prevent this, they play Evade, which negates a card. In this case, Moses kills Egyptian. This means its effect of bouncing a hero doesn't take effect, but it still gives 6-0 to its player for the battle. This means that currently, both sides will destroy each other, giving the Egyptian player initiative again. However, they see no way to improve their situation, so they pass initiative. Moses' player doesn't want to lose such a powerful character, so they play Swept into the Sea to force their opponent to place the horseman underneath their deck. While they can't save the horsemen, the Egyptian player doesn't want to confront Moses again on a future turn, so they play Pharaoh's Curse from their hand, negating the effect of Swept into the Sea. Both players decide that they are unable or unwilling to play more cards to the battle. Moses has a total of 16 strength and 10 toughness, while the Egyptian horsemen have 19 strength and 6 toughness. Because both sides have strength that exceeds the opposing side's toughness, all characters are destroyed. This is considered a victory for good as, although he laid down his life in doing so, Moses did reach the lost soul, and thus it will go into his player's victory pile. And that brings us to the final phase of the turn, the discard phase. At this time, you'll count the number of cards in your hand. If you have 9 or more, you'll discard down until only 8 remain in your hand. After that, play passes to your opponent and they'll begin their draw phase. Players will go back and forth like this until either player has managed to rescue 5 lost souls, at which point they're declared the winner. Component-wise, the game is quite solid. Cards are consistent in texture, cut, and print as one should expect from a TCG. Those of you that played older sets of Redemption may recall that they had rule text printed directly onto the images, which could sometimes be difficult to read. Thankfully, this is no longer the case. Rule text is on its own box and is clearly legible. While the subject of artwork, most of it is quite excellent, but it's also important to note that most of it is public domain images that are reused. I don't mind this myself, but I realize that others despise reused artwork in their games, so it is something to take note of. All in all, my feelings on Redemption, Israel's Deliverance, are... complicated. The short version is, yes, I do very much like what is here, but it's not without a few key weaknesses. First and foremost, the two decks included play almost identically to one another. Although there are a few minor differences, they're almost mere images. Just look at how similar their reserves are. This certainly does make them balanced, but it also means that you don't get any variety from the starter decks. And I feel that I also should warn players that these are very complicated for starter decks. There are two primary audiences that Redemption is aiming for. The first is Christians that already play complex card games, and for them, this will be perfectly fine and a non-issue. 
But then you also have the crowd that have specifically avoided games like Magic or Yu-Gi-Oh because they don't want to be involved with games that have cards like Demonic Tutor or Spirit Message Death. And for that crowd in particular, the complexity of these decks makes it very difficult to ease them into the game. With only one exception per deck, every character and enhancement in these decks has rules text on them. That means there is a lot of information for new players to keep track of, and while that should be expected of tournament level play, that is not something that you want for newcomers to experience. Personally, I think they should have made the decks both simpler to pilot, but also more unique from one another. So we would have given the game a bit more variety, but also would have allowed newer players to wade into the waters before diving into the complexities of the game. I do also feel the need to briefly criticize the lack of a rulebook. You have to print it out, which certainly isn't the end of the world, but it probably would have been a good idea to simply have it in the box to begin with. And on one final note to consider, there is historicity. I feel it is necessary to briefly complain that they did label the Pharaoh of Moses' time as Ramses II. The Bible never makes this claim, it is purely an invention of Hollywood, which comes to us primarily from the Ten Commandments films. And frankly, this does create a lot of problems with the timeline that has driven people away from the faith. There are a number of different theories out there as to which pharaoh it could be. I personally am fond of the Amenhotep II theories. However, it is almost certainly not Ramses. That being said, as for the game itself, I did enjoy it quite a bit, and I heartily recommend it to those who have left the likes of Magic or Yu-Gi-Oh because they're too dark. Just do be aware that there is that level of complexity to consider before buying in. In conclusion, I find Redemption Israel's Deliverance to be worthy really of respectable 8.6 out of 10. If you're looking to purchase Redemption, my first suggestion as always is to check with your friendly local game store. Or in this case, you may also want to check with Christian bookstores to see if they keep them in stock. If you're unable to find it or simply wish to learn more, links are included in the description. But what about you? What do you think of Redemption? What dueling card games do you recommend? If you have any questions, remarks, or opposing points of view, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell. If you really enjoy my work, please consider funding my channel on Patreon. Until next time, farewell, fellow fanatics. Thank you again for watching. I have plenty more to share with you if you're interested. You can click up here above my head to subscribe to my channel. You can click over here on my monitor to see the most recent video that I've worked on. Or if you prefer, you can click up here to open this mysterious vault and see what video that the YouTube algorithm has picked just for you.